Hi there, beginner gardeners. Do you ever walk around your yard and look at your gardens and wonder, hmm, is that bug or insect good for my garden? Is it going to kill my plant? For the next few minutes, I'd like to take you around my yard. And we're going to look at some friends and some foes. And we're going to tell you if they're good for your garden, what they do to aid your garden, and if they're a foe, how to control them with some alternate pest management methods before turning to pesticides. I hope you enjoy it. Garden ants may be a pain for some of us, but they are a natural aerator for our gardens. They keep some pests down by eating the larvae and some of the young. They also are a pollinator when they go back and forth searching for food. Too many ants can cause a problem. Now these ants here on my walkway, I don't want them here. So this is a nest that I will try and control. This type of ant in our garden is fine. And you'll see there's quite a few of them. When I step on them, they're gonna come out. They don't like being disturbed. I also have some of these in my lawn over here, which I do not want as well. They are troublesome. They kill a lot of things um, when they're not controlled. So there's one here, you'll see. This is an ant nest and there's quite a few in there. So to control these, and the one I just showed you on the walkway, there is a couple of methods you could do. You could pour boiling hot water down them. Um, you could also use a solution of borax and soap, and you can put that down the nest. Be careful, though you don't want to use any toxins if you have animals or uh, small children around. You can also use diatomous uh, powder and that uh, apparently will if you use the food safe blend then you're okay to use it around children and small animals just be careful a couple other ants that we have um, are carpenter ants they're larger black they bite um, and they of course feed on wood and they're not fussy about their wood so be careful if you come across that kind of nest you don't you want to really uh, call pest control if you have something like that um, another ant is the fire ant and it is red and they not only bite but they sting so be very careful if you come across one of those in your um, yard hi let's talk about wasps now most everyone dislikes the wasp it is bothersome around gatherings, picnics. Um, people just feel that there's no need for wasps. But wasps, believe it or not, are our garden friends. They kill certain pests, they eat the larvae, they eat the pests, and sometimes they even lay their eggs in certain bugs. I know that's gross, but they do. Wasps control pests that will destroy crops, our vegetable gardens, and our flower gardens. They are a vital part to our ecosystem. To deter wasps, if you don't want them around during gatherings or just want to keep them at bay, there's a few things that you can do. You can seal up your garbages. You can make sure there's no food around. You can get one of those fake wasp nests they're like paper mache and it looks like there's a nest in there so other wasps won't come by or you can uh, plant aromatic herbs around your deck they don't like aromatic herbs so mints rosemary thyme stuff that is that we think is is lovely they don't like um, try not to kill them they are good for our gardens and uh, I know it's hard, but try and remember that wasps are our friends. Ladybugs or ladybird beetles are 
extremely important to our gardens, vegetable gardens, and crops. They eat a lot of pests, but their favorite is aphids. Aphids will decimate anything they're living on. If ladybugs are around, they will feast on them for a very long time and also lay their larvae next to aphid colonies. So when the youngs hatch, they have a healthy snack awaiting for them. They, like the wasp and the ant, are pollinators. They fly, they pollinate flowers, they pollinate vegetables. Um, <coughs> they're very important to keep in your garden. They are an eco-friendly eco alternative to controlling pests in your garden. You can buy them at garden stores, set them free in your garden. Um, you can uh, protect them by giving them food and enticing them to come to your garden by planting shallow flowers such as marigold, cosmos, dill. Um, sometimes they need a little help. They need to be uh, get some water. So if you want to put dishes with pebbles in them and water around your garden so that they have water available to them, as well as they need a place to hibernate in the fall and winter. So right now, uh, you can buy ladybird beetle houses and you can put them in your yard and they will hibernate in the winter for them. I tend to make sure that I cover all of my garden beds with uh, leaves and debris from my perennials when I cut them down in the fall. Under that, the ladybugs will hibernate and lay their eggs and they will hatch in the spring. So in the spring, you want to make sure that you do not clear your flower beds too early because you will disrupt the hatching of the ladybugs and the hibernating adult ladybugs. Let's talk about some foes in our yard and gardens. First, we're gonna talk about the red lily beetle. The red lily beetle loves lilies. They will eat the stem, the leaf, the bud, the entire lily, if you do not catch them in time. As you can see here in a small lily patch that I have here, this, uh, these holes in the leaves are telling me that I've had lily beetles. Now I have picked them and killed them um, and I will diligently check every single day as I can see um, they are feasting already. They fortunately do not like daylilies so your daylilies are safe. They have no natural known predators here in North America in the UK, they do have a wasp that will kill the, the lily beetle. Olds College here is uh, doing a test with that wasp, hoping to introduce it into North America. Um, and I do hope that it works. Um, there's not a lot of uh, insecticides or sprays that work. I have had some luck with some sprays that have canola oil in them. They seem to suffocate the lily beetle and the larvae. Uh, make sure you spray the entire plant, the stem and the ground around it um, because they do lay their eggs in the ground underneath the lily. When you are hand picking the lily beetle, you want to also look for signs between the leaves that look like debris but there it's actual larvae um, from the lily beetle. So when you're removing the lily beetle, make sure you remove that as well. Um, they will destroy all of your lilies. So please be diligent in picking them or uh, experimenting with sprays that will not harm your lily or any small pets or animals. Aphids is another foe we have in our yards and gardens. This is a honeysuckle vine and it's quite susceptible to aphids. Uh, they're very hard to see, they're quite small, um, but you can tell by the way this leaf is curling that it has aphids. So if I open it up, you may be able to just see the white there. So this is my indication that it's time for me to spray aphids. Now if I had a lot more lily 
bird beetles in my yard, I would move them over here because they do love aphids as we've discussed before. I don't have a lot of ladybugs or ladybird beetles right now, so what I will do is I will spray it with the garden hose, uh, making sure that the pressure on the hose is not too strong so not to harm the vine. You can also use uh, some natural sprays, some insecticidal soaps, a neem oil, or even make your own spray as you would the wasp. It's water and some essential oils. So rosemary, peppermint, cloves, or thyme, they don't like those at, at all either. So you could spray whatever the aphids are on with something like that. Ladybugs um, like soft tissue, uh, soft stems. So again, roses, honeysuckle, um, they're not really fussy on what they eat though. So do watch for them. Uh, as I said, you can tell by the curled leaves that I really do need to spray this. So I will be doing that shortly. So in conclusion, there are many different insects and bugs uh, and pests in our yards and gardens. Some are good and some are bad. It's always good to do your research before trying to eradicate or remove them from your yard and gardens. Check your local garden stores, they're a wealth of information. Call your local horticultural society or see if they have a website. And a lot of cities have Yard Smart programs on their website, so that's always good to check out. Do your due diligence, and if you're using insecticides or pesticides, you want to make sure they're not toxic, uh, especially if you're going food safe, especially if you're using them around food, vegetables, anything edible, uh, small animals, and children. Well, animals, period. Um, remember that many pests to humans are very beneficial to our gardens and our crops and they have an important job to do in our ecosystem. Making our yards and our beds and our gardens beautiful